Hi guys, welcome back to another video from Flying Raven Studios. I'm Ben and today we're going to have a look at zenithal highlighting and a little bit of OSL. So come back after this and see what we've got. So let's get started with Zenithal highlighting. We're going to be using this model, which is the Bearded Yell from Ben Danzi. Um, I'll put the links at the end, which I found uh, probably a few months ago. And it was actually one of the first things I printed on my lovely new 3D printer. Uh, it's a fantastic model for being able to show Zenithal highlighting because it's got lots of textures to it, which we can play with and make sure that we've got some good definition of. So the first thing, if you're using an airbrush, is to make sure that you've got the angle right. The idea of zenithal highlighting is to emphasize where your heart's coming from a light source. So in this case, it's going to be the moon. You'll see later on once I've finished it, what I mean by the, the, the moonlight. Um, but it could be the sun or it could be a bulb saying above someone's head. Um, but it's, it's just the angle that you're taking out. So as you can see, I've kind of gone for a 45 degree angle coming down towards the yelling dwarf's forehead. Um, that means that I'm trying to emphasize that area as the, the point where, which will be the brightest from the light source that I'm using. It's also important to make sure that you get a covering of the highlighting over the other sections, not just the, the warmest area. As such. So as you can see, as I'm rotating it around, it's less on the left hand side as we're looking at it, and more on the right hand side. Uh, I, the, the big thing about this is that you just keep going back and keep looking at it and building it because it's not one that's just going to instantly happen. You need to ensure that you're kind of emphasizing certain areas, but the key thing is to make sure that you're not spraying in places where shadow will fall. Again, this is, this is light and light doesn't bend around corners and that's kind of a key point. So for example, with his hair, you wouldn't be getting the highlights on the roots of the hair so the, the dark sides, as, as I'm showing there, it's, it's key that you don't get them because that comes kind of important later on as you're painting it. So you just keep going over it and keep building it up. And once you're happy with it, then you can just check it over one last time. If there's any bits that you see that you've missed, just build it up. And then that's kind of it really for the, the first layer. And this gives you a nice base for your next paint scheme or the, the next part of your paint job where you can then look at where the light has shown through this and, and where you want to go next with your highlights it gives you that lovely base coat to be able to build on um, and as you know as we go through the when we use paints if it's painted on a black base it will come out slightly different than painted on a white base so it gives you that texture already kind of embedded in it before you even start putting paints on so it just helps you with the highlights later on So as you can see, I've uh, kind of slapped some paint on him now, um, giving him more of that moon kissed look. It's kind of, I'm going for that, that night look with a, a fire actually coming from kind of the, again, as we look at him on his left hand side, down from at the ground level. So we're gonna start looking at some OSL and give it a go and see what we can come up with. Now, the important part again with this is like the zenithal highlighting, you have to work out the angle that that light's coming from. It's the light source, it's the warmth and the, the kind of glow that you're looking for with this. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we've got that right angle, that perfect kind of 45 degree angles again, and just keep building it up slowly. It's not a, it's not a race, uh, and especially with your airbrush, you want to just take it a bit at a time. Because you've spent time now painting this model and you don't want to kind of make any mistakes and accidentally go over bits that you you then either have to start again from or kind of work your way around. So you just take it step by step and slowly build up this white. And with this, I'm using a, a white ink, in fact, put through my, my airbrush. It seems to give a much better consistent look across opposed to when I've used normal white airbrush um, paints. It kind of can give that like blotted uh, effect sometimes. So you just keep building it up 
and you just look at the different angles that you're coming from and you make sure that you're just keeping your eyes open for any bits that you might want to just add some extra bits to. Um, and as you can see, I'm just checking it the whole time and just keep repeating it and checking it and checking it and turning it and making sure that the, the effects that I'm looking for are happening. Because again, as I said, you don't want to kind of overspray it and then realize afterwards that you've made a mistake. So once you get to that stage, you're now looking like you're finished and ready for the next stage, which will be the color, depending on what the light source is. So let's have a look at that. So that's zenithal highlighting. As you can see, just a little bit of time and effort put into it to make sure that that white light is coming from the right angle and the, the kind of perfect look that you're aiming for. It gives you that perfect base for your highlighting. So let's move on to OSL and see what we can do with that. So in this section, we're going to have a look at adding the colour to our already Zenith highlighted dwarf after we've painted them. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an orange ink to the areas that we've already used the white ink on. The idea is to give that glow of a fire that the dwarf happened to be sitting beside that evening. Again, the important thing is to get the angle right, like I've been saying, it's kind of a 45 degree angle um, and you just want to keep slowly, and this is the key part about it, slowly building it up. You don't want to do it too much because if you go over the top, again, you've spent a lot of time on this model by this point, so you don't want to accidentally go over the top and have to start afresh. So you just build it up and build it up and you keep doing, as I keep showing, just keep looking at it from different angles and checking the angles and then kind of doing a little bit of spray all over so that the the glow blends in. Because what you don't want is you don't want just a real hot spot of where the, the glow is and then it's not got a, a slight colour change across the rest of it as well. So you keep turning it, keep doing it, just keep building it up. Once you get to a point where you're happy with it, you can then do the last little bits, check it over. As you can see in this bit, I decided to put a little bit of extra highlighting on the kind of the, the top area. It just gives the effect that when you sit beside a fire, it's just the, the glow that goes on that side of the face. So I kind of played around a few little bits and just kept adding it and building it up. And as you can see at this point, I'm just having a look at the back. Now we want to keep that as dark as possible because the fire's at the front and the moon's from the other side. You don't want any highlights getting to that back. So you just got to be careful with it. And again, as, as I said, it's just a slow build up. That's the kind of the key part of this one, a slow build up. Uh, but once you've done, you can then take a full look at it and admire your work. And now let's see the results. So as you can see from the results that we've got at the end, a little bit of time and a little bit of effort goes a long way. And the key thing is to get it sorted right at the very beginning. So with that zenithal highlighting, it really helped emphasize the shadow and shape that we had. Then with the OSL lighting of the campfire, it just really made the whole model pop and come together. So I hope that was helpful. And if it was, press the subscribe button, hit that like button, ring the bell button, and stay up to date with everything that we've got coming up. So until next time, thanks.